OneDrive users can access their files from any device, online or offline, and share files with people inside or outside of their organization. OneDrive enables real-time co-authoring in familiar apps like Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Files light up with rich thumbnails for hundreds of formats, video streaming, analytics, and more, powered by Microsoft Graph. Data in OneDrive is protected with advanced encryption, compliance, and security features that customers can trust. When you store your files in OneDrive, your app can take advantage of the features of the Microsoft Cloud, and your users can access their files anywhere. Use the File Picker SDK to quickly open, download, save, or share files stored in OneDrive from within your own app. Using the same experience OneDrive users are familiar with, get information about selected files directly from the Picker SDK, or use the Microsoft Graph APIs directly to interact more deeply with files. Use special folders to store files in well-known locations in OneDrive, like Documents and Camera Roll, or give your app its own personal folder. OneDrive customers can use or launch your app directly from within OneDrive to open, edit, and preview files. Use OneDrive's file handler extensions to provide icons and previews for your own custom file extensions, and add your app to the new button, or even your own custom actions to the menu bar to launch your app. Your app can get the file content in the format that is most convenient for you. Your app can display custom sized thumbnails for hundreds of different file formats. And you can download files in different formats like PDF, DOCX, and many others. With Microsoft Graph, you can access rich content through REST APIs without having to download the binary, explore extracted metadata from photo, audio, and video files, and use the Excel API to work directly with the raw data stored in an Excel workbook. You can also use the Notes API to access the contents of OneNote notebooks. And with webhooks, your app can get notified when files change so you can quickly react. Use the Delta API to see what changed since the last time your app synchronized with the cloud. Let's explore the Microsoft Graph files-related resource endpoints. There's a drive, and that represents the logical container of files like a document library or a user's OneDrive. And a drive item represents the item within a drive, like a document, a photo, a video, or a folder. These two types expose data in the following ways. There are properties such as ID and name that, expose simple, that are exposed to simple values as strings, numbers, and booleans. There are facets such as file and photo, and these are complex values. The presence of facets like file and photo indicate behaviors and properties of the drive item. And there are references, such as children and thumbnails, that point to resource collections. Accessing the currently signed in user's OneDrive using the graph.microsoft.com slash me slash drive endpoint, that's how you're going to get to OneDrive. This endpoint will return details about the user's OneDrive, including the date it was created, last modified, quota information, and what type of OneDrive it is. Is it OneDrive for business or is it OneDrive consumer? To view the contents of a user's OneDrive, use the graph.microsoft.com slash me slash drive slash root endpoint. This endpoint will return the root folder of the OneDrive account, including the folder property that contains a number of folders and files at the root of the, per the OneDrive account. To view the contents of the folder, use the slash children endpoint, and you can also access a specific folder. And developers can use one of the many Microsoft Graph SDKs to access a user's OneDrive account. For example, to get the current signed in user's root OneDrive folder with the Microsoft Graph SDK, you would use the code that you see here on the slide. You're first going to get an authenticated instance of the Microsoft Graph client, and then you're going to call the client.me.drive.root property to get the root folder uh, for the OneDrive. You then can issue a query on the authenticated client by going to the me.drive endpoint, and then add on additional properties as you see fit. The Microsoft Graph also enables the signed in user to access another user's OneDrive, provided they've been granted access to it. And the way you do this is by going to the Microsoft Graph uh, v slash users slash user ID slash drive endpoint, replacing the user ID with the actual ID of that user. Microsoft Graph can also access OneDrive accounts for more than just users. And for example, you can access a group's OneDrive account by going to the group's ID slash drive endpoint and the SharePoint site's default document library by going to the site ID slash drive endpoint as well. OneDrive resources are returned either as drive or drive item objects. A drive item represents a folder or a file, and images are considered special types of files and have additional properties such as height and width. 
And you can also determine the specific resource of a drive item with the presence of folder, file, or image properties on the drive item object. To do OneDrive operations, you'll need one of the following permissions that you see here on the slide. The specific permission required will depend on the operation that you want to do. And for example, if you're creating, editing, or deleting drives and drive items, one of the right permissions is going to be required. Some of the permissions can be granted by a user, while others must be granted uh, to the app by an administrator. The drive item resource has a property of content that can be used to get access to the file's data. Only a drive items with the file property can be downloaded. The content property returns the primary stream of the file. For example, to download a specific file using the Microsoft Graph.NET SDK, you would use the code that you see here on the slide. After I first get an authenticated Graph client, and then I'm going to get a stream of data coming back from the, from the content, and then I'm going to set up where that file is going to be stored in the drive item path on my local machine. Then I'm going to save the stream to the local file by creating the, the file, and then by using the file stream to read the contents in and copying it to the file on disk.